The autothrottle system, ATS, plays a considerable role in reducing your workload as a pilot. It maximizes safety and efficiency of flight by providing control of aircraft thrust and speed. Although the ATS is part of the automatic flight system, it's important to remember that it is an independent system in its own right. Because the ATS is independent, it is able to provide control of aircraft speed and thrust in both automatic and manual flight. The ATS is linked to the APFD system when the autothrust function is active. You'll see the autothrust function in more detail later on in the lesson. The ATS provides automatic control of thrust within predetermined limits as well as automatic control of speed. The ATS uses the thrust limits calculated by the thrust control computer. The thrust control computer continuously calculates thrust limits even when the ATS is not armed. Thrust limit is calculated according to the mode selected on the thrust rating panel, TRP. To sum up, the ATS acquires and maintains the thrust limit calculated by the thrust control computer. And it acquires and maintains the speed or MAC selected on the FCU. However, as you'll see later, under certain conditions, the ATS uses a target thrust and speed, or MAC, calculated by the FMC. Now let's take a closer look at your main interface with the ATS, the FCU. Select each label in turn to review each control function. Select the forward arrow when you're ready to move on. This window displays the speed or MAC setting. This is the speed MAC selecting knob. Pressing it changes the display in the speed MAC window from actual aircraft speed to actual aircraft MAC. For example, here actual aircraft speed is displayed. Pressing the knob now would change the display to actual aircraft MAC. As long as speed MAC mode is active in ATS or APFD, the speed or MAC is held. The speed or MAC can of course be changed and will still be held. Pressing the knob a second time changes the display back to speed. This push button activates or deactivates the auto thrust function. When the auto thrust function is active, the push button illuminates green. We'll be looking at this function a little later on. When the speed max setting knob is pressed, it activates or deactivates the preset function. When the preset function is active, the indicator illuminates green. The preset function is covered in more detail later in this lesson. Rotating the speed MAC setting knob allows you to change the speed or MAC setting. Pressing the speed MAC setting knob allows you to activate or deactivate the preset function. Pulling the speed MAC setting knob deselects profile mode and allows you to enter a speed or MAC constraint. 
You'll learn how to do this in the FMS lessons. In addition to the ATS controls on the FCU, there are some other controls that need to be discussed. Select each control in turn to review its function. Select the forward arrow when you're ready to move on. The ATS lever arms the ATS. With the lever set to on, the ATS modes can be engaged and alpha floor protection is available. No autothrust mode will engage unless the autothrust function is active. Column 1 on the FMA indicates the engaged autothrust mode. You must select each of the components. Moving the go levers engages autothrust for takeoff and go around. The autothrust quick disconnect push buttons are also located on the throttles. Pressing either one immediately disconnects the autothrust function. The TRP indicates the selected thrust mode and the corresponding limitations calculated by the thrust control computer. This part of the lesson deals with the autothrust function. As you know, with the autothrust function active, the ATS is coupled to the APFD. This means that the engaged APFD mode determines which autothrust mode is engaged. As long as the ATS lever is armed, the autothrust function is available throughout the flight. Automatically activated via the go levers at takeoff and automatically disconnected when the throttle levers are set to idle at touchdown. The autothrust function can be activated in flight using the autothrust push button, providing the APFD is not engaged in land track mode. Usually, however, the autothrust function is used throughout the flight, from the initial action on the go levers at takeoff right up until touchdown. There are a number of modes associated with the autothrust function. They're displayed in column one of the FMA. Some autothrust modes are specific to the FMS and will be discussed there. They are profile thrust, profile speed, and Profile Mac. Select each FMA in turn to review each autothrust mode. Select the right arrow when you're ready to move on. In Thrust mode, Thrust is limited and controlled according to the mode selected on the TRP. The associated APFD modes are takeoff, level change, and go around. In speed Mac mode, 
the auto thrust function maintains the speed or Mach selected on the FCU. Speed or Mach is enunciated on the FMA depending on whether speed or Mach is selected on the FCU. The associated APFD modes are vertical speed, altitude, altitude acquire, and land. In retard mode, the ATS commands the throttles to the idle position. Thrust latch, although an ATS mode, is not associated with the auto thrust function. Engagement of thrust latch automatically disengages the auto thrust function. Like thrust mode, thrust latch captures and maintains the thrust limit corresponding to the mode selected on the TRP. It also provides protection when auto thrust is not available. The preset speed Mac function enables you to pre-select a speed or Mac as the new target speed or Mac. However, the preset function is only available when a speed or Mac is already being maintained by either the APFD or ATS. And certain conditions are met, which are listed here. You'll learn when to use the preset function in the AFS operations lessons. This lesson concludes with the arming and disarming of ATS and the engagement and disengagement of autothrust. The autothrottle system is armed by moving the ATS arming lever to on. Do this now. With the ATS armed, and providing the aircraft is not in the alpha floor condition, the autothrust function can be engaged. There are two ways to engage the autothrust function. It can be done by using the go levers, or by pressing the autothrust push button. Engage autothrust using either method. Autothrust can be engaged using the autothrust push button either on the ground, with both engines stopped, or in flight. However, pressing the autothrust push button in flight only engages autothrust as long as the APFD is not active in the land track phase of land mode. You should remember that using the AFS throughout the flight automatically controls thrust from takeoff when autothrust is engaged by action on the go levers to landing when autothrust automatically disengages on touchdown. Autothrust can disengage for a number of different reasons. You can disengage it manually or under certain conditions it disengages automatically. In flight you can disengage the autothrust function in two ways. You can either press one of the ATS disconnect push buttons on the throttle levers or press the autothrust push button on the FCU. However, this only disengages autothrust if the land track phase of land mode is not active. Automatic autothrust disengagement occurs when both throttles are at idle on touchdown, one engine is in reverse thrust, Thrust latch mode is engaged, both APs and FDs are disengaged, ground spoilers are deployed on one side. Automatic disengagement also occurs when maximum continuous thrust, climb or cruise is selected on the TRP when the computed airspeed is less than 60 knots.
Speed Mac mode is active on the ground and one engine is started. Select the Autothrust push button to disengage the Autothrust function. When Autothrust is disengaged, for whatever reason, the manual thrust warning is displayed in column 1, line 2 of the FMA. This warning is also displayed if thrust latch is lost. The manual thrust warning will be displayed in column 1, line 2 of the FMA, any time the auto thrust is not engaged. So what does the manual thrust warning mean? It simply means that you have to control the thrust. The warning remains until the ATS is disarmed, or it is possible for auto thrust to be engaged. Finally, to end this lesson, let's look briefly at ATS disarming. The ATS is disarmed automatically by the ATS lever tripping off if one of the arming conditions is lost. Good grammar and spelling are important, manually but if you... Finally, to end this lesson, let's look briefly at ATS disarming. The ATS is disarmed automatically by the ATS lever tripping off if one of the arming conditions is lost. You can manually disarm the ATS by selecting the arming lever to off. Remember, if any of the ATS modes disengage, it does not disarm the system. This completes the lesson on the ATS. Press the right arrow to move on to the quiz or the back arrow to review.